hello, hello. Today I decided to make a commentary on the Shimakaza. Now, I actually made a commentary. The last time I think I made a Shimakaza commentary was uh, when they nerfed the torps, the range on them. And of course, I highly recommended the 12 km torps. And I still think the 12 km torps are the most universally viable. They are incredibly strong and well they got enough range so you can avoid things like radar and such but i realized i never actually made a commentary on these hilarious f3 torps because the f3 torps are also well they are in, they are a lot of fun if you play of course that requires playing the shimikaze very aggressively and of course um that's very much my style so even though I still think uh, the 12 km torps are overall the best ones for like every situation, a jack of all trades, for someone who plays very aggressively like I do in the Shimikaze, who's not afraid to go up there and basically knife fight any DD they bump into, like not caring if they run into a gearing or whatever, just straight up taking the fight to them. For them, these F3 torps are pretty damn hilarious. The speed, as you saw, is, is 76 knots, which is just absurdly fast and it's pretty much nigh impossible to evade these like even german bbs who run hydro even when they see them coming with hydro acoustic surge active they still get wrecked by these torps especially the t9 and t10 that can't turn that well and you get huge damage on them because well they have no torpedo protection they have no torpedo belt really now as you saw the enemy team has a bunch of t10s and five different dds so I char I speed boost into A because I had the spawn and request requested some support, but uh, as usual, team is very slow to react on this. At least the hipper is actually pushing in, which is nice. And at this point, well, they saw a Yamato turret. Now I know there's DD here because you see this capture bar; it stopped moving. That's a sign that there's a DD in here contesting. So I turn in, and I found my target, an enemy Shimakaza. Now. Enemy Shimakazas, I just laugh at. Honestly, they never understand to use their guns. I can just hammer them for ages before they do anything worth threatening. You can see, like, you can tell he's not using his guns, but he's aiming my way, so that's a total direct sign that he's using his torps on me. So I already know he's launched torps. So I drop my speed and I angle away from him. Now, pretty much, his entire prediction of these torps is gonna whip by in front of me, like, miles ahead of me. Oh, he already launched torps. Two volleys, the floor. Oh, and there's the third. So he had a third volley left and he launched my way. But you can see how yeah, that's gonna miss me by a mile. The Benson opened up on me. He smoked up and started shooting me. I could smoke up, but honestly, at this range, a Benson. It was so tanky in a Shimakaze, 22k HP. I can tank a bit of Benson shells that he's trying with his dispersion hit from there. Like he'll hit one or two here and there. Whereas I'm pumping out these massive volleys of damage on this enemy Shimakaze. I'm fine with this trade, like whatever. I'll, I'll let the Benson get some damage on me. I don't care too much. There's the, the Benson torque me, fair enough. But this Shimakaze is so quick and so agile, I repair to make sure I get the rudder shift bonus. They did, wouldn't even have reached me. But whatever, I killed the Shimakaze. That was the guy who was spotting me. Now the Benson no longer has any vision. So I start charging into the Benson now. Because if the Benson stays where he is, well, basically, if I see that this cap. Uh, stays contested, then I'm just gonna torque into the smoke and probably wreck him guaranteed. So he's either gonna run, in which case if I decide to fight him now because I didn't use smoke earlier, I will have the smoke advantage, meaning I can just smoke up and start wrecking him and he can't engage me at all. Or he'll have to run. And in this case he obviously chose to run and you can see I'm starting to capture, which means I will stop. Okay, what the f My turpits in both North Carolinas, they turned away and they're fleeing. The turpits and the North Carolinas are both all fleeing. Holy shit, I hate battleship players. I'm sorry, but I just hate them. Why are they so cowardly? Why are they all so cowardly? They saw Shimakaze events in Yamato and they all turned away to flee, even though I got them wrecked that Shimaka. Oh wait, no. They would have lost all the kill. Whatever. Anyway, enough of battleship players. Just the Benson, as I saw, as I, as I said, he came to uh, contest me, so I slowed down. I smoke up. He shot, so I know the Udalo is spotting him. I waited, of course, until he shot before I smoked that to make sure he spotted. And now I just start hammering. As I said earlier, because I didn't smoke earlier, I have the smoke advantage now. He can't smoke up and disengage. He basically just has to flee. And meanwhile, of course, I'm just having the time of my life, just ramming shells up his ass, pretty much. And you saw a 3.5k volley. I mean, when you have 15k HP, and ideal volleys like that, it hurts. It hurts a lot. And as I mentioned probably before, uh, I've... I always go on about Shimakaze guns, but for a good reason. These things have 
phenomenal shell speed and it's so easy to launch shells. There, of course, as soon as I saw him show broadside, I started accelerating because that's an obvious sign that he's going to torp. I'm popping speed boost so I can reverse real fast because I just want to peek out and shoot him twice and then I want to get into cover so that Yamato doesn't delete me. One molly. I'm going to get the second volley here and now I'm going to, yeah, back in the smoke. I'm undetected so now the Yamato can't wreck me. I got the kill, which is exactly what I wanted. And Yamato whiffed. Well, he hit one wall, one shell, I'll take it. So I've killed both their DDs. And, well, the Turpits finally grew some balls and started turning back now that we've basically done all the work for them. But the North Carolina, the other Turpits, is still running. Yeah, I'm tempted to say honestly to report that division, but whatever. Now I get to finally show off these lovely, lovely torps. Of course, you can see how little of a lead you need to take with these because they're so stupid fast. Here, of course, there's something that really sucks. I l want to launch my torps there, but I know that that goddamn corpse of the Benson is going to block my torps. So I'm basically launching on both sides of it. I might have wanted to wait a bit more, but honestly, I didn't want to let this opportunity slip, slip away. So... I basically launched on both sides of the corpse, because I know he's, he won't have time to sink. These corpses are so fast. Look how fast they're already over there, and that guy has no chance of avoiding them. Just no chance. Even if it wasn't like perfectly on the white part because of that wreck, I'm still going to land a bunch of those torps. Without the wreck, that would have been a guaranteed deletion, but still. Absolutely destroyed. Now I'm patiently going to wait. He's repaired, of course. You, I can see you can check if you have damage counter on, you can check top, top right. If you're not gaining any damage up there, that means he's report, uh, re, uh, repaired the flooding. As soon as I know he's re repaired the flooding, I'm waiting for him to shoot before I open fire. There we go, he shot his volley, and that's my sign. You see, now if he would suddenly turn around and start pointing his, his guns at me, I could just stop firing, and uh, I would uh, become invisible before his reload is, is up. But because... Uh, well, basically, because I waited for him to shoot first, I, I, get, I give myself that option that if he starts turning my way, I know I can basically fade away and not get killed by him. Now that he turned away, of course, I have no such qualms and I just keep hammering him. I set the fire, I know that he can't repair the fire because he repaired the flooding. So I'm just hammering on with my guns, because why not? The biggest threat he has is that Benson. But if you look at my toolbar, uh, because of course I run the premium smoke, something I always, always recommend for DDs, my smoke is already off cooldown, so I'll be able to smoke up against that uh, Benson if he decides to engage me. First of all, I'm finishing off this Yamato. And the Yamato is dead. I want to turn my guns, because I'm pretty sure he's going to engage me. Ah, shit, this... Damn, he engaged me sooner than I expected. I expected him to push closer before he engaged. I'm f kind of forced to smoke up now. It's unfortunate because my turrets aren't fully turned and I'd be able to punish this guy with my guns. Significantly harder if my turrets would had actually turned. But one of the drawbacks of these guns, even though I like everything about them, is naturally that they have very slow turret traverse. Uh, running expert marksman, kind of an option if you really like it. But honestly, when I run, I just like the sheer power of the torpedoes on the Shimokazes, that's why I run the torpedo reload instead. But that's not to say Expert Markman isn't an option. I'm not gonna get many bullets on him, he stopped shooting and he's gonna... Yeah, that's a shame. I c kinda squandered that moment because he engaged me. I expected him to close the distance more before he engaged, because what I would do if I knew where Shimokaze was, I would basically close within uh, six, five kilometers or something. Basically six, as soon as the concealment is about to run out, that's when I would open fire, and then I would close the distance while shooting at him, because um, obviously, yes, please report Div uh, A for bad playing, yeah, and I just, I decided to report him as still, because, because both of those, look where they are, they are in my, our base, being completely useless, and they basically abandoned us at day, and it was only through our excellent play that we managed to, like, basically turn it into our victory. Anyway, what I was saying, um, if, you, if you're engaging a Shimokaze in a Benson, you naturally want to close the distance uh, because uh, the closer you are, the better your, the more, the stronger your shells become because uh, there's less of that shell travel time, which is of course one of the weaknesses of the USDDs. They have a lot of shell travel time, and of course you get to utilize the strength, which is uh, the turret traverse, meaning a Shimokaze has a a lot of issues fighting a USDD close range because of those sluggish turrets and of course when you get close all your shells start hitting and that's when the superior DPM of the USDDs turn in your favor but these long range kind of fights that's where Ishimakaze, as Ishimakaze I'm even confident taking on gearings like at 
six, seven kilometers, and I just start kiting away, and I use both my back guns to just start wrecking and gearing. I just feel very confident in those situations, because you're you're hitting. Even though he has a lot more DPM, you have a lot more active DPM because you're simply landing a lot more shells than he is. And of course, you're faster than the gearing because the gearing is so slow, so you can easily outrun him. Against Kabarovs, of course, well, you shouldn't even be engaging a Kabarovs. Kabarovs is the and king of anti DDs as long as uh, someone is dumb enough to actually just show themselves to the Kabarovsk. If you just stay away from him, there's not much you can do. You have such an advantage in concealment that no worries. Okay, there's a Shimakaze. 7.5 kilometers. Is he gonna push? Nope. He stopped and he smoked up. He's probably gonna torp the turpets. And I am happily going to return the favor. Making sure I'm close enough that he has no chance of fleeing. Yeah. Time to put these lovely F3s. Of course, one of the other advantages of the F3s is that they reload 16... If you have, of course, all the upgrades and the captain perks, they actually reload 16 seconds faster than the 12 kilometer torps. So, more torp and more fun with these. But, of course, they are significantly more risky. But, exactly in knife fighting situations like these, or, well, when a DD smokes up and you have a rough guesstimate where he is, you can just make this huge widespread which is very tough to evade, simply because of how stupidly fast they, they are. Yeah, he tried to get out, tried to move out of the way, but he got hit by two torps and absolutely deleted. Now then, I could go for C and get myself even more XP. I, I could probably actually speed boost and even get the solo cap on C, but uh, that's so boring. We're gonna win this game anyway. If this was close game, uh, then I would go for the C, for, go for C to secure it and secure the victory basically by having full cap, but ah, I'm just gonna go for the damage because it's fun. And as I was saying about the short cooldown on these dwarfs, you can see they're only 40 seconds. So I'm gonna see actually, I might be able to, if I time it right, I might be able to, able to get torps on these turpets through this little gap here. I think the reload will come up just in time. Just making sure my concealment was 5.9, because <laughs> as you saw, I went very close to the turpits there, 6.1, but that's still in, within the safe zone. Closing the distance. You can see how little of a lead you need to take with these torps, because they're so fast. Okay, let's slow it down, close the distance a bit more. Hmm. I usually, of course, as I've said often before, I dislike launching torps, uh, multiple torps on the same line, basically not creating a fan spread, but here I, I'm constrained by the terrain, so I can't make a wider fan spread than here, which is a bit unfortunate. Shit, he was turning in. That's unfortunate. He's gonna get lucky enough to basically accidentally dodge those torps. That's unfortunate. Well, of course, his guns aren't in my way, and I can easily get them to cover, and I have smoke available, even in case the Benson decides to surprise me, the one that fled earlier. So, might as well start hammering some damage. I'm undetected, so why not? Yamato somehow managed to eat one of those torps. Well, not really somehow, basically the turpets probably spotted them all, but as I said, they are so stupidly fast that the Yamato didn't even have time to dodge them. Oh, looks like the Benson sailed all the way around to A, to cap A. Uh, I'm not really certain if that's... I mean, the idea was good, but he should have been doing that a lot sooner. He must have wasted a ton of time in the base, basically hiding out or something. Well, that kind of works for me. Because now I know there's nothing challenging. Which way is the Yamato gun? Okay, it's almost wrecked. And I'm gonna see if I can just YOLO in and rush these turpets. Let's see if you're running the, the, the detection module. If he is, I'll get spotted at 3 kilometers. Okay, I'm not spotted at 3 kilometers, that means it's running the concealment module, which is perfect. But... the score... damn it, and the Yamato died. Yep, I had no chance. But anyway, that was a fairly short game, I guess. Like, what? 13, 14 minutes? But you can see the stupid amount of credits I'm forming with this thing. Like, 3.3k XP, I could have made probably 3.8 or something, 3.9 if I'd gone for the C cap instead. Like, just... This is just fun, just hilarious. I know, I know a lot of people think the Shimokaze is terrible right now. I'm talking about how nerfed it is. But honestly, I haven't enjoyed this ship as much as I have uh, like this ever since the nerf. Because now it's actually fun to play and it's not the boring snorefest of sitting at max range and spamming dwarfs all day. I actually just love the Shimokaze. 
and as you can see by the way I did over I did over 50k damage in just gun in gun power there or 50k just with my guns anyway if you're interested in what what spec and captain perks and modules and such I'm running uh, I can link to my old Shimokaze commentary because I go over all that stuff in that one anyway I'll talk to you guys later